welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I'm going to review the latest Qi Di Fast, where they recently added a few upgrades. I previously tested the Qi DX Max, which is already quite large, but this iFast is even larger, and it is the largest printer I've reviewed so far in terms of its footprint. Its total weight, including the shipping box, is almost 100 pounds. It's fully enclosed, and its main feature is the actively heated chamber. The maximum chamber temperature can reach up to 80 degrees Celsius. This is the first consumer printer at around $2,500 to have this feature. Besides that, it came with two sets of dual extruders. One set is for printing regular temperature filament like PLA, PETG, ABS, and TPU. One set is for printing nylon, PACF, or polycarbonate. It allows you to print multiple colors or different filament at the same time. Besides that, it also came with NGN15 linear rails on the X, Y, and dual Z axis. The print bed is a one-piece thick aluminum with magnets and a powdered PEI print surface. It uses strong springs and a double lock mechanism under the print bed, and it came with two Meanwell 350 watt power supplies with a combined power of 700 watts. The heated bed uses one PSU, and the hot end, the chamber heat component, and the rest of the printer is powered by another PSU. The print volume is 360 by 250 millimeters with a 320 millimeter Z height. It supports a USB drive and Wi-Fi printing. It runs a 32-bit motherboard with silent stepper drivers and an auto power off relay module. There are two airtight filament boxes for you to use for moisture sensitive filament like nylon carbon fiber. It looks even better than those $5,000 printers on the market in terms of hardware. I would like to thank Chidi for sending me this machine to review and with that, let's get started. The most difficult part for us was removing this machine from the box and setting it down on the table, which took quite a lot of effort for both my brother and I. As it's a fully assembled machine, all you have to do is remove all the protective materials from the printer and you are good to go. We have the fully assembled printer, the high temperature dual extruder, and the regular dual extruder is installed on the machine, two airtight filament boxes, a roll of sample filament, two filament holders, and some tools. Let's start with homing the machine to make sure nothing got loosened while shipping, and it seems all three axes are working normally. Then, we will level the bed, and the leveling process is really simple. Enter the leveling menu and select a normal level for the first time. Use the leveling plastic card that comes with the printer and adjust the screws underneath the bed, just like how you would level the four corners of other printers. Finally, set the Z offset for both the first and second extruders. As I am going to use Wi-Fi printing, I will first set up the Wi-Fi network on the printer, just like how you do on a cell phone. Then, I will use the Qi D slicer, which is more than just another skin Cura. Go to qd3dprinter.com and get the latest version, which is 6.2.3. After the installation is done, you can see a list of all their printer models. Select iFast, click the refresh button. You can see your printer will show up here and you don't have to enter an IP address as it will search your local network to find your printer. Let's start with something simple to make sure that everything is working. I will print this calibration cube with Airy One Galaxy Black PLA. The cube looks pretty good with the default PLA profile, and the dimensions are also accurate on all axes. Next, I will print a 3D bench using the same profile with some Airy One Green PLA. It seems like this $13 PLA also prints very nicely on this machine. I didn't see any problems with this benchy. The overhanging and cooling all look good. Then, I will print some letters for a project using the same cheap $13 Airy One white PLA. Printing each letter took around 4-5 to five hours, and printing these three took around 14 hours. I ended up using almost 50 hours to print all of these letters, and the result looks great. 
As this is a dual extruder, I will try to print a simple multicolor model. First, we need to use the screen menu to print an alignment pattern, and then, according to the screen instructions, adjust the X and Y axis to make the center line perfectly aligned. You may need to do two to three rounds. Okay, it looks pretty close to me, so I will slice a multicolor model. This is a spiral spinner model, and it contains two parts. By default, everything will be printed using the first extruder, so I will select this part and click on the second extruder. Then, select both models and merge them. Align the flat surface on the print bed and slice the model using the same PLA profile. This will take a little less than three hours. The slicer uses an ooze shield instead of a prime tower to wipe the nozzle. The result seems okay, as the model is quite clean. I pushed in a bearing, and it can spin smoothly. Next, I will try some ABS, as one of the major features on this machine is the actively heated chamber, so I will see how well it can handle this overture ABS. I will set the chamber temperature to 60 degrees Celsius, and change the layer height to 0.3, as this is a functional part, and we don't need it to be super detailed. This is going to take 8 hours and 28 minutes. The result is very nice. There is zero warping, and all of the corners are perfectly flat. The layers also won't crack like one I've printed before with an open printer with glue applied. This is the best ABS crate I have printed so far. Afterwards, I will try some Polymaker ASA. The slicer doesn't come with an ASA profile, but the parameters should be very similar to ABS, so I will just use the ABS profile and change the nozzle temperature to 260 degrees Celsius and set the bed temperature to 95 degrees Celsius. I will still keep the chamber temperature at 60 degrees Celsius as if it works with ABS, it should also work with ASA. The result is great except for this corner that has some filament residue, making it a bit imperfect. I printed quite a lot of these afterward, and they are all functional. Next, I will try some breakaway support filament. I just bought this unknown brand of filament from Amazon, as the price is reasonable, and the maximum nozzle temperature can reach 260 degrees Celsius, which should work within Polymaker ASA to print the support material. I will enable support, and use the second extruder to print all supports. There is only one profile for the S-Screen support material from Chidi, and I don't have that, but I will just use this profile anyways. For the ASA, I will still use 260 degrees Celsius, and for the support filament, I will use 250 degrees Celsius, which is 10 degrees lower than the maximum recommended temperature. The preview looks fine, and this print will take around 2 hours. The result is not good. The support filament didn't stick to the ASA in this area, but stuck too well inside the fan duct. I could still remove this so-called breakaway filament, but I would definitely have to try some other brand next time. Then, I will print a door slot using Overture TPU. There is a TPU 95A profile, so I will just use it and change the nozzle temperature to 235 degrees Celsius and the bed temperature to 70 degrees Celsius. The result is perfect. I printed two of them, and they work great. Next, I will try some nylon carbon fiber. Chidi also sent me a roll of their PA12CF filament, which I will use to print a vacuum button with a lock mechanism to hold the battery as the original one broke. I will use Fusion 360 to design the model, as I don't have the digital files of the vacuum, so I have to measure it manually, and ended up doing quite a lot of adjustments. I used some cheap Airy One $13 white PLA to print a few prototypes, and used the $100 nylon carbon fiber to print the final model. As this machine comes with two airtight filament boxes, I will put the PACF filament inside and use the Bowden tube to guide it to the extruder. 
I would just use the PA12CF profile as the filament is from Qi D, so I shouldn't have to change anything on the profile. Printing with the nozzle at 280 degrees Celsius and the bed at 80 degrees Celsius looks good to me. I also kept the chamber at 60 degrees Celsius and the result looks great. It's more rigid than the original part and it fits perfectly. This machine prints very cleanly with nylon carbon fiber. I also printed a fan duct for a V6 hot end and it looks great. Finally, I will try to use the same unbranded support filament to print with PACF and see how it does. It was printing fine at first, but after a few layers, the support filament didn't extrude at all and I heard some clicking noises from the stepper motor. The print still looks nice, but the support material was clogged. It seems it started to melt before at the gear. I also tried some better water-soluble filament from Aquasys. Their filament is super expensive. The 180 series costs $200 per 500 grams and can print up to 300 degrees Celsius. The 120 series is cheaper, costing $100 per 500 grams, and it can print at 245 degrees Celsius, which is a little bit low when printing with PACF, but let's give it a try. It prints just like the unbranded filament. The nozzle clogged after the first few layers. As I clogged the hot end when printing with both support filament, I will use the second E2 extruder to print some PACF to make sure it is still working. I printed another two fan ducts and it printed just as well as the E1 extruder. So it seems I need to get some better support filament to print with PACF. Okay, after quite a lot of test prints, let's talk about the pros and cons of this printer, starting with the pros. One, the print quality is excellent and I have no complaints at all. As the print bed is supported from both sides, it moves up and down, which is better than any Cartesian bed slinger 3D printer. Besides that, it has MGN 15 linear rails, which are wider than most linear rails you see on many 3D printers, and they are smooth and rigid. 2. The actively heating chamber. Since the patent of the Stratasys heating chamber expired a while ago, this is the first consumer level 3D printer I have seen so far that comes with an actively heated chamber. The maximum temperature of the chamber can reach 80 degrees Celsius, and I got great results when using it to print ABS and ASA. As this is a fully enclosed printer with the carbon filter at the back, I can't smell any of those awful odors when printing ABS or ASA. 3. It has two sets of dual extruders, one for standard temperature filament like PLA, PETG, TPU, or any filament that requires 240 degrees Celsius or lower, while the high temperature set can print up to 300 degrees Celsius with two hardened steel nozzles. The extruder switching mechanism is simple and consistent. It bumps the print head to the right side and toggles the E1 extruder, or bumps to the left side to toggle the E2 extruder. 4. Some dual extruder or IDX printers come with no filament sensor, but this iFast comes with two filament sensors, one for each extruder, which is really nice. 5. It also includes two airtight filament boxes with a desiccant tray that allows you to keep the filament dry, which is the key to successful nylon carbon fiber printing. 6. The thick, solid aluminum print bed is super flat. I don't have professional equipment to measure how flat it is, but when I print something that occupied the entire print bed, every single part had a perfect first layer, which is why you can't see any BL touches or similar ABL sensors on this machine, as auto bed leveling is no longer required and the bed is perfectly level. 7. The bed leveling spring mechanism is excellent. I believe they already leveled the bed in the factory, and after a long shipping distance, when I check the level of the bed, it is still almost perfect. It used a double screw, which fixed the print bed really well. 8. The Chidi slicer works pretty well. I always considered slicers from 3D printer manufacturers as skinned Curas, as they are usually nothing special and an older version of Cura. However, I can see that Chidi redesigned the interface, added more features for their printers, and they do update the slicer frequently, so I would consider it more as a fork of Cura than just a skinned Cura. The Wi-Fi printing feature also works flawlessly. Sometimes, it may not run as smoothly as Cura, but this is still a slicer I would be happy to keep on my computer. 9. It uses two Meanwell 350-watt PSUs with a combined power of 700 watts. One is dedicated for the heated bed, the other one is dedicated to the hot end, the heating chamber, and other components. 
for your reference, when heating the extruder to 280 degrees Celsius and the heated bed to 100 degrees Celsius and the chamber to 60 degrees Celsius, it takes around 12 minutes. 10. The 5-inch touchscreen is very responsive, and it has some extra features. For example, you can manage the files and delete the unused ones right from the screen, which is handy. But I think the screen UI still has quite a lot of room for improvement. I will talk more about this in the cons section. 11. This printer also has an auto shutdown feature. I turned on this feature every night for the last print, and the built-in LED light is also handy. This is an example of recording videos without using any other lights in the room at night. Finally, I've been testing out this printer for the past two weeks, and it started printing almost non-stop since it was right out of the box. It has been working fine, and the print quality of all materials is great. It's still a little early to say that it's the most reliable printer I have ever used, but the result is quite impressive. Now for the cons, which are mainly concerning the software and screen UI. The 5-inch screen is large and looks really nice on this big machine, and the screen menu is fully functional, but there is still a bit of room for improvement. For example, the filament menu used to load or unload filament doesn't check the nozzle temperature first and starts right away, allowing cold extrusion that lets the motor skip. When preheating the printer, you need to use this plus or minus button to adjust the temperature. When you press on the number, it restores the last set temperature, which is good, but it would be nicer to bring up a number pad to let you enter the exact numbers. Another example is when the machine is printing, I assume that when I press these numbers, a number pad will show up. But you still need to click another icon, select the item you need to adjust, and the number pad will show up here. Finally, when you send a print job from the slicer to the printer, when you try to preheat the printer while waiting for the upload to finish, or use any feature on the touchscreen, the upload will fail. If the motherboard cannot multitask, the screen should show an uploading message and temporarily disable the touch feature to prevent any other operations. For the hardware, I have no major complaints as they are solid and work really well, but I think there are still a few minor issues that can be improved on. 1. The camera is basically unrelated to the printer, except it is powered by the motherboard, so you don't have to wire a 5 volt power for it. Besides that, they don't have any relation at all. When you first set up the camera, the power switch behind the camera was set to off by default, so you have to remove two screws and take it out from the mount, turn it on, and configure it using the app, just like how you set up a home security camera and put it back. It kind of works, but it's more like a DIY camera you might add to the printer by yourself. The software engineers of Chidi should do more on this part, and at least integrate it with a Chidi slicer or make a mobile app for the camera with some basic controls of the printer, like printing G-code files on the USB, as well as monitoring the current print job. Another issue with this camera is when the chamber temperature reaches 50 degrees Celsius or higher, it may stop working after a while. It would be better to equip a camera that can resist up to whatever this heating chamber can reach, which in this case is 80 degrees Celsius. 2. The USB drive location is not the best, but I generally use lower profile SanDisk USB drives for all my 3D printers, so it isn't that big of a deal. I would suggest Chidi ship the machine with a low profile USB drive instead. However, when I try to use a low-profile SanDisk USB drive, if I plug it in and turn on the machine, the motherboard could not boot up and showed a black screen. But if I insert it after the machine is booted, it works normally. I tried these low-profile ones, as well as another two SanDisk USB 3.0 drives, and they all have the same issue. All USB 2.0 drives work normally with the printer, as well as two other SanDisk Extreme Series USB 3.0 and 3.1 drives. I confirmed with ChiD that their main board is not fully compatible with all USB 3.0 and 3.1 drives yet. I ended up buying two unbranded USB 2.0 low-profile drives from eBay, and they worked fine on this iFast, as well as on my other ChiD X Max. Three. As this machine is heavy, when you want to move it on the table, you may have to push it, but the rubber feet under the machine are going to leave marks on the table. Those marks can be cleaned off by alcohol, but this kind of small details could definitely be improved on. 4. To switch the print head, you need to remove the cover, loosen a few screws, and disconnect two cables, which is not too complicated, but using a modular tool head would be better. 
In conclusion, this Qi Di iFast is a solid printer with exceptional hardware that you won't see on any printer that costs even twice as much. It's made to print tough materials like nylon carbon fiber with excellent results. With the dual extruder, you can print two colors, but the best part is that you can use breakable support filament or water-soluble filament that allows you to print complex parts that can only be printed on some high-end machines. It would be even better if Chidi shipped some sample S-screen support filament with the machine, as it looks great printed with nylon carbon fiber on their website. Even 250 grams will be better than nothing, as most users buying this printer want to print complex PACF models that require special support filament. The actively heating chamber also allows you to print easy-to-wrap materials like ABS or ASA effortlessly. Of course, it still has some weaknesses like a less polished user interface, not too good documentation, and some minor issues that don't affect the overall print quality. If you are looking for a 3D printer equipped with the best hardware you could possibly get at around $2,500, this Qi Di Fast is hard to beat. I put a link to this printer under the description. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please do like and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to receive new video updates. I will see you next time.